Hey everyone, Wolflord Row here. Today we are discussing the end game for the Eldari race and the foretold confrontation between the rising god Iniad and the chaos god Slanesh. General spoiler warning to begin as we are going to be discussing events from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, with the events of the Broken Realms campaign over in the Age of Sigmar, and a certain Chaos God Slanesh coming back into the spotlight, I thought it's time we discussed the future of She Who Firsts and the race she is irrevocably tied to, the Eldari. Now, as we know, within the 40k setting, the birth of Slanesh came about due to the decline and depravity of the one-time Eldar Empire. And ever since, the Eldari people have lived in fear of She Who Firsts. That every single death of their people will see their soul devoured by the God of Chaos. Their only solution to this, to adorn themselves with spirit stones, to capture their souls at the point of death, becoming one with the Infinity Circuit and the souls of their people, trapped in death and yet kept in life. Even the distant Exodite culture, who shunned the way of their Craftworld cousins, are forced to protect their souls with their own world spirits, and the Drukhari cower within the webway, and this was forever to be the slow doom of their civilization a small glimmer of hope remained. Within the collective infinity circuits of all the craft worlds, a new god is beginning to birth. The god of the dead, Iniad. Though long prophesized, and attempts at bringing about its arrival sooner have failed, fate is most definitely stirring, and the avatar of Iniad now walks the material world. The time of Iniad's arrival draws near. Slanesh for her part, however, is not oblivious to this threat, and has tasked her forces to destroy the Eldar race, and especially the new Inari subsect, with renewed vigour. The greater demon Shalaxi Hellbane stalking Yvrain across the stars. Now the question is, what is the next step in this war of fate? Well, Yvrain continues her quest for the Crone Swords, raising followers and avoiding the eyes of Slanesh as best she can. But the real interesting possibility is the plan that arose from Craftworld Eandon during the Psychic Awakening. After their prince Uriel died in defence of his craft world, and was resurrected by the very powers of Iniad, a radical call soon swept across the people of the craft world. If the entire craft world were to cross the threshold of death all at once, to join the Infinity Circuit, and all their fellow craft world cousins perform the same, the boost to Iniad would be immeasurable, quite possibly birth the Death God into the warp and see it battle Slanesh, fulfilling its prophecy to free the Eldari race once and for all. Now you may be thinking this plan of, well, mass death shall we say, is, well, insane. However, there is two points to consider here. Firstly, their plan is dependent on the theory that they would be able to return to bodies of flesh and blood through the powers of the Inari and the cloning technology of the Drukhari, the Dark Eldar. So that does bring a bit of logic back into their plan. And secondly, Craftworld Eandon, in particular, has suffered greatly over the years. Once the largest and most populous craft world, it is now largely akin to a ghost craft world. 
Having taken the full brunt of High Fleet Kraken, its population has been decimated and now has to rely greatly on its infinity circuit and the souls of the slain to defend it with the use of its wraith constructs. So once you consider these two facts, you can kind of understand why so radical an idea came specifically from Eandon. Because its relationship with death is already completely intertwined. Most of their craft world has already died. For them it is a last roll of the dice, and what do they truly have to lose? However, what their fellow more populated craft worlds such as Ulfway would make of this proposal, I don't think would be so appealing. But could we be headed in this direction? It's undeniable the Eldari race has been on the decline as each edition passes. Could Inead being birthed this way defeat Slanesh? I don't think it's enough. Slanesh has been gorging on untold Eldari souls for millennia. And let's not forget, she is swelled by every action of decadence within the galaxy. I mean, let me introduce you to the race of man. If Inead is truly to be strong enough, I think it needs more than just the remaining souls of the craft worlds. I think it needs the remaining combined numbers of Drukhari souls too. And that is something I certainly don't see happening. Sure, some Drukhari have joined the cause, but most of them have not. They're too self-indulgent to even care. And Vect is doing everything in his power to stamp out the rise of the Inari. When it looked like Slanesh was being quietly removed a few years back, the rise of Inead seemed imminent. But personally now, I don't see it happening. At least not that way. There won't be a grand rise of Inead and a death of Slanesh. If we do have any significant movement at all over this edition, I think we could see the Eandon Craftworld enact their plan. Whether through leadership of their council or growing unrest of its people, their efforts could possibly further give birth to the growing consciousness of the God of Death within the Warp. But, and this is the key point here, their fellow Craftworlds will not follow their actions. Into the binds of death, Inead will be birthed, but he or she will remain weak, and the newborn god will need to remain hidden or protected. And this is where we may see more involvement from the Harlequins and the Laughing God. But Eandon, betrayed by their fellow craftworlds, will truly become a ghost craftworld, manned entirely by souls of the dead. Now of course this may not be likely, but it's just my speculation on where the story may go, and I do particularly like the idea of this one. It continues to further the Inead storyline, while also adding a little bit more character to one of the major craft worlds. And it is kind of ironic, the one-time foes of the Necron Empire taking a step into undeath themselves. But as always guys, what do you think? Where do you see the Inead storyline evolving onto? Obviously it's unlikely we'll get such a major development within this edition, but the storyline could well take another small step forward. Do you think the seeds that were planted back in the Psychic Awakening campaign will continue to evolve like I do? Or do you think that one will be left and Evrain's campaign for the Crone Swords will continue to be the main focus? As always, drop your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support really means a lot to me, it truly does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, 
then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.